Well, good evening. Good to see everybody here tonight. If we could uh, have your attention, we want to get started. We've got a very busy program tonight, so if you have your prayer list, uh, we're going to touch on some of the uh, highlights on the prayer list tonight. So good to have you here. Beautiful evening that we have out there tonight. Thanks for coming to church. Not on your prayer list, of course, is the event of the day, the, the Georgia school shooting. So really be praying for those families down there. Uh, two students killed, two teachers killed, and nine wounded, and several others hurt, not with shooting-related injuries. So really pray uh, for that school system, and 14-year-old gunman uh, shot up people today. So really pray uh, for that school system down in Georgia. At the hospitals, we have Colleen Burleson and Dave Gertz in Altman, Marlene Lewis in Fairview Hospital in Cleveland, Betty Miner in Mercy, and that Cleveland Clinic, we have Art Limbacher and Christine Riemann. Christine's being moved to a step down uh, after that heart surgery that she has, so she is starting to improve a little bit. Be in prayer for our election. And also on the, on the prayer list tonight, if you are not registered to vote this Sunday, before and after the 1015 service in the South Hall, there's a place to go and register. If you've moved, change of address, or never been registered, go. They will take care of you. They've got everything you need, and they will also deliver your registration to the Board of Elections for you. So try to make it as simple and easy as possible. We have got to vote in this election, okay? Pray, pray, and vote. So we've got to make sure that we're doing that. Uh, pray for the uh, country of Israel. Again, a lot of things going on inside the country as well as outside the country. So really pray uh, for that. We have several people on our prayer list tonight that are battling cancer, other health needs. Glenn Need, uh, I talked to him this afternoon. He had a repair of a replacement of his dialysis, uh, dialysis port. It went very well, so he was on his way home when I sp spoke to him. And uh, other needs and concerns on there tonight. Uh, again, people battling illnesses, cancer, and other health issues. Please don't leave this here tonight in your seat. Take it with you read it and pray over it. Also, uh, a missionary family in a restricted area uh, has uh, talked about an outreach. In those restricted areas, they're looking for any way that they can minister possibly. So they're going into this area and they've had a call in to, to minister to an 85-year-old lady hoping to have other abilities to minister in other places as well. On the back, we have John and Tammy Cooley, our missionaries in Jamaica. I'd encourage you to read that prayer letter and to be in prayer for them tonight as well. Well, we have our mission committee helping us out here through uh, the six weeks here that we're focusing on missions, and, and Joe Klink's going to come, and he's going to open us in prayer, and then we'll get started with our program tonight. Joe? Okay, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come before you, Lord. Uh, we just praise you for who you are and for what you've done, and Lord, you are, you are a great God, and you, you've done mighty works, and we've, we've witnessed that, and Lord, we have faith in you, and we bring these requests to you. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you would meet the need uh, for each one. Lord, as was mentioned, we pray for these families in Georgia that are so impacted by uh, this horrific event. Lord, I just pray that your people would uh, surround them with the love of Christ, that they would find hope through you and bring them peace and comfort, Lord. Lord, as a church, we, we stand with the nation of Israel. We pray for them. We pray for uh, those that are still in, in bondage, Lord, that uh, Lord, you would miraculously free them. Lord, I just pray that um, uh, you would just guide and work in that situation in a mighty way, that we may, that we may see your hand and, and glorify you even more. God, I pray for uh, the program tonight. Pray for each person that's speaking, that you'd give them uh, just uh, uh, stillness in their soul and help help us all to just present the work that was done in Nicaragua and Paris, Lord, that you would be honored and glorified and that the people here that uh, so heavily supported this endeavor uh, would see that it was very worthwhile. And I just pray this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, thank you, Joe. Well, Josh Vick and the Nicaragua team, if you guys would go ahead and make your way up this way, or you, you're gonna have them... <clears throat> He's, speak, he's slowing down the process already. <laughs> um, we are excited over the next uh, several weeks to have some missionaries with us, 
But tonight we wanted to kick off with two of our mission teams from this year. Uh, if you've never been on a, um, a missionary team before and to go to a field, let me encourage you, we'll be uh, giving out next year's um, dates uh, next month in October. Uh, so you can plan on that. But it is a life-changing event, not only for the missionaries and the people that you interact with, but for those that go as well. And that's what we want to experience tonight. So we're going to first start with uh, Josh and the Nicaragua team. All right. Well, perfect. Well, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for uh, being a part of this. I wanted to uh, um, thank uh, each and every one of you for being a part of uh, sending us, you know, on this trip to, to Nicaragua. And so obviously... You see the uh, uh, photos that are up there on the screen, and um, we're going to talk through each one of those, and then I've got the rest of our team that's going to spend some time to share some stories that they had from their, their time there in Nicaragua. I want to take a few moments and speak to you about the experience uh, that, that our team had to be down there in Nicaragua, but first I, I want to point uh, to the screen uh, to the team that, that is there, where my name is there, Josh Vick. You can see us all in the, in the van. That's our whole team that was there. Um, they... Uh, they really sacrificed to go down to Nicaragua. Um, it's, a, it's not a cool climate. It's not like the weather we have here this last week. Um, it's a very hot climate. Um, there's no air conditioning. Um, the, the van that we rode around in, the air conditioning was not the best. Um, there's no hot water, so when you take showers, you take them with cold water, um, and you cannot flush toilet paper, all right? I know that's kind of gross, but that's the truth. That's, that's what it is. Um, and so when I say that they sacrificed, I'm telling you they sacrificed to be there, not only of their time, but of comforts that we have here in the United States. And they did it all to be able to present a message uh, that is able to change people's lives, the message of the gospel. And they did a wonderful job. So would you help me like thanking the team and how good of a job they did? They really did. They did a wonderful job, and we're certainly uh, proud of them. When we got to Nicaragua, several of them got sick. Um, some got really sick uh, um, and different things that, that happened. Um, but through all of that, they fought through that, and we had a great, a great week. So great job, guys. You did a wonderful job. I want to point you to another uh, photo there in the top right. You'll see the, um, the gal wrapped in toilet paper. Um, that was a game we played. Um, that is none other than Tracy Warner, um, our missionary to the country of Nicaragua. Um, I have to tell you this, that Tracy is not just a uh, hard-working missionary. She is one of the hardest-working individuals that I have ever met. Um, that is, that, I'm telling you, if you've ever spent time with Tracy, she is the hardest-working person. And I'm not sure if Tracy, um, uh, I doubt it's live right now, but at some point, I'm sure Tracy will watch this. And so can we give her a round of applause for putting up with us? Uh, and I say putting up with us, she, she, as many of you know, is a nurse practitioner. And so every time somebody's like, I don't feel good, I'm like, hey, Tracy, there's another one not feeling well, help. And so she, she genuinely put up with us that week. And, but thank, thank you, Tracy, for allowing us um, to be with you. Um, it was a, an absolutely um, awesome honor. And so um, we just thank her. And um, I want to tell you, this is my second trip to the country of Nicaragua. And I have to tell you that it's a wonderful place um, full of people that are some of the sweetest people that you would ever meet. Um, they really are a genuine people, um, a very kind people. And as I've went down there the last two years, I've sort of fallen in love with the people there. And I enjoy going back each time. And Lord willing, uh, maybe even this summer I'll be able to go back again. But the people there in Nicaragua are very open to the gospel. They really are. They're not... Uh, they're not a people that are shy to tell you what they believe or to sit and to have a conversation. And so I spent time with several people during our week down there and got to share the gospel with them. And each time they were very open to discussing their faith, what they believed, and they were interested in discovering the truth of what the Bible has to say uh, in the gospel message. You'll see uh, a photo there in the bottom right. Um, there are, uh, you see me there, and then there's two other um, boys there. The one with his back uh, to the picture, his name is Eli. He's our interpreter. But the one there who you can see the side of his face, um, his name is Kenner. Um, Kenner uh, was a, a young boy that was there. Um, he was supposed to be in school that day. The way the school system works in Nicaragua, some go in the morning, some go in the afternoon, but they only have half-day school program. And he was supposed to go to school in the morning, but didn't. Um, and so through some circumstances um, that we found out later, and I'll spare those, he landed himself at the church that we were at that morning. 
I mean, I don't believe he was there on accident. Um, we had a, a VBS program that was geared toward elementary school students. Uh, and Kenner was about 15 or 16 years old. And so it was really beyond, he was, his years were beyond really what the program was suited for. But I noticed that he didn't jump in and play the games that we were playing. And so I pulled him off to the side with our interpreter, Eli, and I shared the gospel with him. And, uh, and, and what we found out is that Kenner was trusting in his good works in order to get him to heaven. Uh, and through God's word and presenting the gospel to him, Eli and I were able to uh, show Kenner the truth uh, of the message of the gospel, that only through faith in Jesus Christ uh, is how you're saved. And I want you to know that that day Kenner uh, prayed to receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And so I long for the day, if I don't get to see him on this earth, that I'll be able to be reunited with him uh, in heaven as we, uh, as we spend all of eternity there. Um, and that's what this trip was all about. It was all about presenting the gospel. I'm not sure if any of our other teams will, will talk about this moment, but um, we got to see five um, come to faith in Jesus Christ that week, and many seeds of the gospel were planted in many hearts. And so it was an awesome opportunity. It was an effective trip. And thank you for your support, for your prayers um, in, in getting us there to Nicaragua. I know many of you gave um, for that, and you supported us through the different fundraisers. So thank you. Thank you so much. Continue to pray for those that received the gospel and maybe didn't respond. Pray for Tracy and all that's going on down in Nicaragua. But thank you again. And I'm going to have my wife come up. She's going to tell you a little bit, and then each student will come up and share uh, their story. Hi, everybody. Um, I had the privilege of traveling back to Nicaragua again this summer to work alongside Tracy and with our amazing group of teens, as Josh has introduced already. And I am very happy to report that the trip was incredible. Now, we did prepare ourselves for extreme heat. And as Josh said, we did have heat, but it never felt quite as hot as last year. And also, before um, we headed down, Tracy did give us a heads up saying, hey, we've had crazy rainstorms, roads are turning to rivers, we've had to not go by car, walk to get to churches, be prepared for that. So we did, um, but the Lord, uh, the Lord uh, allowed us to uh, not ha incur or in have any raining that <laughs> flooded everything. So, um, so the Lord provided for us, we were able to get to every church that we were scheduled. Um, one thing that we, um, really help the kids to understand and is just to remember, stay flexible, stay flexible. We don't know what's going to happen when we get down there. And so that was one thing we were concerned about. And the team did a great job being flexible and despite not having to do the rain, um, they still had to be flexible in overcoming sicknesses, the heat and different things. So our team of students that you will hear up next from um, worked so hard preparing and all the preparation and time they poured in showed when we got to the mission field with Tracy in Nicaragua. They led an effective, like Josh said, an effective vacation Bible school where many, not only children, but adults heard the gospel where five were saved and many, many seeds were planted. In Nicaragua, um, we, we get to serve alongside Tracy Warner and in that it has helped me personally to see us as a church, what we prayerfully and financially support, be put into work. The, the churches that we go to, um, the one, you can see me with a, a little baby. Um, I'm a mom, if, no, if you don't know, and if I can hold a little one while I'm away from my kids, I loved it. Um, but the, to the left of that is actually a building that our church provided the funds to do, and that is Tracy Warner's home church. So it was incredible to not only go there once to see the building that our church helped support to build, but also to be a part of serving in the ministry as well. I just wanna thank each and every one of you that supported us and allowed us to go. It was a blessing for me to um, go alongside my husband and work with Tracy with these eight incredible teenagers that um, they have just grown tremendously spiritually, working with them over the past nine months preparing for this trip. Uh, next, I'm gonna introduce our first teen that came on the trip, and that is Rachel Walker. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rachel. Um, I just wanted to start out by thanking everybody for the support, um, whether that was prayers or financial. Um, it definitely helped us get throughout the week and just be able to reach all of the kids. 
Um, so first, I wanted to start out also by thanking Tracy. I lived down there for a month with her a little bit before. Um, and just for her to be able to give up her time to bring me along with her just meant a whole ton. And I've learned a lot um, about ministry, about the mission field, but also learned a lot that I can bring back with me and um, just minister to people here. Um, so one of the days that stuck out to me the most was on Sunday. Um, since I was there for a whole month beforehand, I was able to watch Manatiel de Vida, which is their um, church that Tracy ministers in, um, grow in such a short amount of time. As we gathered at the church throughout the weeks, um, the numbers went from around 70 to around 90, which was so amazing to see. Um, although it's not all about the numbers, there were around 20 souls that were reached and um, that were able to hear about the gospel. It is important to remember that we should be inviting people to church and witnessing to people. And so it was really cool to just see these kids bring in other friends, family members, um, and just different people that they meet on a ba daily basis that we might not be able to meet. Um, so as these kids came to church, they would bring parents, friends, and siblings, like I said. Um, it is common for kids to start coming to the church, just kids. They'll walk to church by themselves with their siblings, neighbors, whatever. Um, and then they'll slowly start to bring, like, their parents. So their mom might come, their aunt might come, um, their grandma might come. And the last people normally to come are the dads, the grandparents, um, the grandpas. So um, it was really cool to see. I was down there for Father's Day. We celebrated, and it was really cool to see that we did have like nine or ten dads that came, which is a huge win because that means that God is working in their families and that all of the families are coming together to church to be together on a Sunday morning praising God. Um, in this picture on the right, it is um, her name. The baby's name that I'm holding is Ami. There's Chris Bell and then their parents. Um, it was really cool to be able to minister to them throughout the time that I was there. Um, and that is just a testimony that God does work in families because the wife was the one that was being discipled by Tracy. And because she was being discipled, she was able to come to church. And then um, Juan, her husband, was able to come to church as well. So now their whole family is in church, which is amazing. And then also um, down in the bottom left, that is Luis Carlos, which is the pastor, and then his wife, Daisy. Those people are so amazing. They can speak a little bit of English. They're a little nervous, um, but they were so welcoming and just enjoyable to talk to about ministry and about just worshiping God and praising him. Um, and then at the top, you can see that's the church. Although it doesn't have walls and it's not air conditioning like we have here, um, they were so, so excited to come to church and so excited to learn about the gospel. And everybody sang songs, everybody participated, um, but we also got to celebrate Dia del Niño, which is Day of the Kids. Um, so it was really cool to see all of the kids come and sing songs. Um, and so um, I just wanted to thank you. I am fortunate enough to have a family that, ex that and extended family that attends church, um, but this kind of just taught me that I need to reach out and um, reach my friends, reach maybe some other family that doesn't come to church, um, and just invite them back to church or just witness to them. Um, hopefully this is encouraging to you as well, but without this experience, it would be hard to witness to people without an open mind. So thank you so much for this opportunity, and Mr. Ian's going to come up next. Uh, hello guys, I'm Ian, and just a warning, I have an accent, so I'll just try to understand. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like to thank God for the, for the wonderful trip and keeping us safe. And secondly, I would like to thank you guys for all your support. And I, I enjoyed going to Nicaragua and ministering to kids. Th that was the highlight of my summer. And... Um, uh, it was awesome seeing kids like, like they're like happy with what they have, and they're like, like I guess not shy to like attend because because they'll think they're like they're not cool or something, and they, they just they just like to have fun. Uh, it was it was amazing seeing five people gave their life to Christ. That was that was amazing, and um. If you look to our picture here, the, the one on the uh, right, that's, that's during our free time. We play uh, soccer with, with the kids. It's, it's not like a goalie soccer, it's just a circle, like you pass around the ball. And I got hit in the face by Rachel like twice. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, oh, he was Haley, never mind. Almost Rachel, though. But. And um, to the left, that's, that's the last day before we left. It started raining outside, so we just played and stuff. And Rachel got mad at me because I poured a cold water on her. She's... And the, the people there were so generous. They, they made us feel welcome. They gave everything they had just to make us feel welcome. That was, that was amazing. And the, the, whole, the whole place made me feel like I was home again. It, it was like the Philippines, but the language and the food's different. <laughs> different. Um, the, the roads to the mountains were like very small and bumpy, and it was very humid, but that didn't bother me. What bothered me the most was stepping on dog poop. <laughs> I kind of ruined my day, but. <laughs> I was wondering what stink it, it was made all the time. <laughs> but, um, but overall, that was the best experience I've ever been, that I've ever been a part of. And, and once again, I'd like to thank you guys for all your support. That's it. <laughs> was supposed to introduce me, but I guess I'll introduce myself. My name is Sophia Sherry, and when I was up here last year to speak about Nicaragua, I thought I'd be a little bit less nervous about coming up here again, but I'm not. I'm still terrified. <laughs> so there were two things that stuck out to me the most while we were there in Nicaragua. The first was the growth we saw at Manantiel de Vida. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. So you can see the picture on the right. Sorry, I needed a left. You can see it on the left. Last year when we went, there were a few kids and a few adults. But then when we went this year, there were rows of kids and rows of adults that came to hear the gospel at the church and to hear us speak our VBS thing going on. So. It was incredible to see how God has helped grow that church within a year. And then the second thing that stood out to me the most was actually a kind of collection of events. So on Tuesday was the day that we had five salvations, which was incredible. But and then on Wednesday and Thursday, we had a conversation with three people. And each of them said that they were okay, that they were not, or that they were not ready to accept Christ yet. And that was devastating to hear. But I don't want to say it was a good reminder, but it was a reminder that our mission isn't to force people to Christ. Our mission is to share the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ in the hopes that they may receive salvation. And sometimes this means we have to step, not step away, but let God work and probably keep talking about the gospel to them, but the more we push, they might just push away, if that makes sense. So I want to thank you guys for your support. It means a lot to us buying all the pepperoni rolls, the spaghetti dinner tickets, and everything else we had going on. And then I also want to thank Tracy because she does not stop. I know that the week we were the week we were going there, I do believe she had something going on, and then the week after she had something going on, and she still planned every single day to the second. So thank you all, and then I'm gonna have Christian come up here and talk to you guys. All right. First off, I just want to thank you guys for helping provide this trip for us. Uh, I mean, it was great to be able to see God work in people's lives. Five people getting saved in one day was amazing. My favorite moment of it was when we were in this one church on Tuesday. They, all, like, all they had was an alley space for playing games with the kids. And we were just able to kick a soccer ball around with them. And that was enough for them because they were so grateful just because that's what they're used to. But also, I mean, it was great to be, be able to meet so many people like Eli and Tracy and just see how they worship and minister to people and be able to take that into my life and use it in my life. And, I mean, I just thank you guys for all you've done for us and buying all the tickets and all that. And now Madison is going to come on. Yeah. 
Hi. Um, I loved Nicaragua, and I would definitely go back on the next trip. It was the most wonderful experience of my life. Nicaraguans are the sweetest and most grateful people you could ever meet. They are also the most open to a conversation. Talking to them about God is a thousand times easier than talking to anyone you know that doesn't know Christ. They just might make some of the best friends that you could make, even though there is a language barrier. One moment that stood out to me was a conversation between Josh and our tour guide from Volcano Boarding, Jose. Their conversation was like, he didn't know Christ, but his wife did. And our, Josh talked to our translator, and then the translator translated it to Jose, and it was all a big circle of languages and mixing all. And he had so many friends and people he worked with that weren't good people to be around and stuff. So he didn't think that he could accept Christ because of the people he was around every day. And that's not it. He can accept Christ, and he doesn't have to change everything about his life. And he just didn't understand that until Josh got it through to him that it's not all about that. It's just, it's all about that he believes in Christ and that he will go to heaven someday. And he did not accept Christ, but we at least, Josh told him about it and planted that seed that he now knows about Christ. And that Tracy also, I'm pretty sure, gave him a track and... Now he can make that decision on his own time, and hopefully he will make that decision. And I hope that you all pray for him, that he can make that decision. Thank you, and Haley Wood will be up next. Good evening, church family. My name is Haley Wood, and I have the opportunity to travel to Nicaragua for the missions trip. If some of you don't know, Tracy Warner is my aunt. She is the hardest working person I know. To see what she does in real life is a great experience. Although I've heard so much about the stories from when she's home, to see it firsthand is something that not everyone gets the opportunity to see. The work that goes into it is something that can't be seen from the outside, but to see it firsthand is incredible. I first wanna thank the church family for all the support that they gave to us. Without, you, without the help of you guys, the trip would not have been possible. I had the chance to go to Nicaragua last year where we visit, visited some churches. This year we also attended some of the same churches. The thing that stuck out to me was the growth in these places. When we went last year, we were all amazed by the size of the churches. Although they didn't have much, they still appreciated what they had. But this year it was mind blowing to see what, how much the churches have grown. They have grown in quantity and the kids' growth of the knowledge of the Bible is something that was really amazing to see. Although we visited some of the same churches, we also had the opportunity to attend new churches. Some had small meeting areas, but no matter what, they made the most of what they had. An important lesson I learned from this is that you don't have to have a lot to be able to worship the Lord. Your location, your age, your supplies, nothing determines if you can worship the Lord. Every place should be a place of worship, and these kids and adults showed us that. It opened my eyes to see the willingness of the adults in participation as well. To some adults, participating in kids' games and activities and songs is kind of cheesy and not many people want to do it because it's embarrassing and who wants to do that? But these adults loved it and they just were there and they wanted to learn more. They loved having the opportunity to learn about God and participate with all of us. All in all, I am so grateful for the opportunity to go down to Nicaragua and teach the gospel to so many kids. Thank you. Next up to speak is Everett. Hi, as she said, my name is Everett, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity that you guys have given us all by being generous with your donations and giving us the money that we needed to go down to our trip. And I'm a little upset to say from the moment we landed to the moment we left, I was one of those who was sick, unfortunately. <laughs> <clears throat> but
but it did not stop God from showing me what he had planned for the entire week. And what I saw was they didn't have any of the luxuries that we do. They didn't care that they didn't have a really comfy seat to sit on or that it wasn't breezy enough outside. They were happy with the fellowship and what they had to learn was God's word. They were just happy with that. That's what they enjoyed. And nobody was staring at their phones or being distracted. They were engaged in conversation with themselves and us whether or not there was a translator there. Like, <clears throat> one of the kids, Kenner, as Josh was talking about, he and I had a really nice conversation, but there's no translators around. So what we did was we did our best to describe it with our hands and motions, and then we used emojis on my phone to talk about sports. <laughs> but you could see that they, that's what they enjoyed. They enjoyed having people involved and talking to everyone and just being surrounded by fellowship and fellow believers. And even, the, even though I was sick, people still walked up to me and talked to me, invited me to go play soccer. I got my butt kicked, but <laughs> we played soccer, we played volleyball, they, we even did crafts together and they just, they truly enjoyed that. And that's all I have to share. They were truly happy with what they had and the people around them. Next up is Lucas Hot. Uh, hello, church. Uh, I'd like to <laughs> I'd like to thank you for all the prayers and donations for sending us on this trip and praying for us while we were there. Uh, I'd like to speak about the church we went on Tuesday. It's over there. Both pictures. Uh, <coughs> so, even though they had very little space and most of them walked there, they still had joy. It wasn't any kind of fake joy. It was joy from the Lord that only the Lord can give. And even though some people might find the stuff we did there boring, all of them enjoyed it, even the adults working at the church. And I would like to, again, thank you for helping us go on this trip. Thank you very much. It sounds, I know, and if you've never been to Nicaragua, uh, we will send some adults at some point again. But uh, yeah, the Paris team can come on up. That way we'll, everybody can come on up. We'll keep it moving. Uh, we also had a team go to Paris. Uh, I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. We've talked about this a lot. But I'm just going to have these guys give you uh, a little description of what they experienced uh, it took uh, five, two years, rather, to really put this together, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more, and you'll see some pictures as well. Okay, I'm Bill Small. The first mission trip I ever took was over to Tanzania. Went over with Matt McLeese, his sister, and another young man. I never was much on passing out tracks before the tragic thing that happened with Matt, but God prepares, and he prepares the way for us. And actually, the best part of the mission trip actually occurred before we even left U.S. soil. When uh, we were there, Mike and uh, all of us were getting ready and we grabbed a, a meal to eat and we were sitting there and a lady was sitting near us and she said, would you watch my things for a minute while I throw something in the trash? And we said, sure. And started talking with her and said, where are you going? She said, to Israel. And we said, are you a little bit concerned about that? She said, I'm scared to death. She says, but my husband and my kids are already over there. And so we were able to talk to her, and Bob had given me permission ahead of time because we didn't have any track yet to take with us, but I had some of these uh, J. Vernon McGee's uh, Bible bus passes, has a QR code, talked to her. I also got her address and followed up with some things so, and sent her some things. She's Jewish, her husband's Jewish, and so on, but we were able to talk to Julie. And so 
That's one to keep praying for. We were able to plant seed. Then after that, we got on the plane, and then as we were seated, we had a young lady that was right next to the window seat. She was a young Chinese architect, not from you know, communist China, but she's Chinese. We were able to start talking to her. Also, Julie, the one I talked to before, her husband was an architect, and I teach civil engineering and architecture in high school. And so we had a con common conversation the whole time through with these two ladies, and God prepared and set everything up. So when Denise, when we talked to her, there's this conversation going on about architecture and about the Lord and things. And then the next thing, we had uh, a, about a six-hour conversation that you were able to carry on as a witness all the way from, from here until we got to Paris. So that was my bit, and I'll get out of the way so you guys can go. <laughs> My name is Mike McLean, and this was my first mission trip, and I'm 75. I was um, taken back by the people, the friendliness of them, and one of the men I met was Oliver from Spain, and he told me he'd been a Christian for 10 years, and he was taking a track to witness to his family so he could save them, and he had a fiance, and he wanted her to find Christ. So that was very touching to me. And then one of the women that helped prepare our lunch and breakfast and dinner, she wanted me to pray. She's a believer, gave her a track. She wanted me to pray for her dad and mom, Kathleen and John Pierre, that they find salvation. So as we went there, then on one Sunday morning, I went to a Baptist, French Baptist church. And the songs they played were ones we play here, but they were in French, they were singing. And I met a couple from Guyana and gave them a tract, and they wanted to be able to witness to the people from their homeland, and the tract was meaningful to them, and they were asked a lot of questions about how we were doing this. And the thing that really touched me the most, I think, was what brought us together was the Holy Bible and the verses and prayer. It really brings people together. So it was a great opportunity for me to grow as a Christian. Hi, my name's Terry Chapman, and I uh, just want to thank God that I had the opportunity to go to Paris, and I appreciate, I'm glad that I belong to a church that believes in missions, yeah. and I uh, appreciate all your prayers. I started praying about this trip when I first got signed up a few months back, and, you know, God just blessed the whole endeavor. Uh, I don't think anybody got sick. I managed to get sunburned while I was there, but uh, we did have hot showers, and, uh, but we would go out in teams. There would be a group go out in the morning from like 7.30 to 12.30, and then they'd break down into smaller groups. And then the second group would go out at 12.30 and stay out till 5.30, and we'd pass out tracks. And um, it was a unique experience because on the track, I don't know, did you guys all get the track or did they pass those out? It, it's got a QR code on the front of it. Well, uh, you know, they speak French over there, so it's bonjour, you try to, you know, give them a track, and you get mixed reactions. Uh, some are all excited to take it, some say no thanks, mercy no. Um, but anyway, a lot of times I would focus on the QR code with my phone, and I would pull it up, because they were wanting to know what the track was about. And then I would pick their language, and I would scroll down through the plan of salvation, and they're reading in their own language the plan of salvation. So that was very unique, um, it was a great idea, whoever came up with that. Uh, but I had the chance to talk to a couple Muslim gentlemen, and he was trying to explain to me about uh, Mohammed, and I said, oh, you're Muslim, and uh, he said, Jesus was a prophet. And I said, well, yeah, but he was also the son of God. But he, he got to read the plan of salvation uh, because of that link. And I spoke to a couple uh, Muslim men, but also spoke <clears throat> to an Irish Catholic, and uh, I talked to him for a long time. He was from Ohio. Uh, he, knew, he, he poured concrete for Timken. He had family that went to Triway where my kids went, uh, and I talked to him for a long time, but he uh, was actually excited that we were passing out Bible tracts, and he read through the salvation too. They're a little bit different on the doctrine, but he, he got the gospel. Um, but it, it was just great um, opportunity and I just thank God that I got to go, 
and I appreciate all your prayers, and um, I just feel blessed from the whole experience. It was great. Thank you. Sorry, Bob was uh, talking when he invited us all up, and I wasn't listening. <laughs> Uh, I also went to the uh, Paris uh, outreach, and I just want to share the first day that we were there. Uh, we were at a place called La Defense, and uh, while we were there, it's a very busy corridor that I was standing at. Um, and uh, where, where that place is at, there's, um, it's where the swimming events were taking place, and there was also a, a mall there. It's a massive mall. So there was a ton of traffic, and so we handed out hundreds or thousands of tracks. Uh, and while we were there, I, there was a picture, I don't know if you saw it, it was of me and I was speaking to a, a gentleman, his back was to the camera, and he had a backpack on, but he was from the country of Cyprus. Um, and as I got to talk with him, um, found out that he had some Greek Orthodox uh, background, um, and, and he was unsure about who God was. He was trusting in the sacraments and, and works and things like that. But he said, he told me this, he said, um, before I came to Paris, um, he said my, in, some time before that, his father had committed suicide. And, uh, and he said in that, that trial, he, he got to the place that he thought, maybe, there's, maybe there is no God. Um, and he sort of resolved himself for a period of time to say that there, there is not, there's not a God. Um, and then before he went to the Olympics, he said, he, he said that he had prayed a prayer, and he said, God, if you're real, prove it. If you're real, prove it. And so that day he walked by and I said, hey, would you like, the, would you like one of these? Or I, I used the, the saying, did you get one? You know, like they'd be missing out if they didn't, you know. And, uh, and, and he's like, no, I, I didn't. And he said, what is it? And I told him what it was. And I got to have about a 20 or 30 minute conversation with him about the gospel. Um, and he said, you know what, I don't think it's an accident um, that you and I met. I don't think it's an accident um, that, that we talked. And I said, no, I completely agree with you. It's no accident at all, and um, he made the commitment to scan the QR code um, to read the track. Uh, he spoke good English, so we were able to, uh, to, to, he probably spoke better English than I do, but, um, but we were able to have a great conversation um, and plant that seed. So it's really interesting how the Lord worked in all of these different uh, circumstances and um, how here's a guy from Cyprus and I'm from Ohio, and we link up and he's searching whether or not there is a God. So it was a great trip. So thank you again for allowing us to go on that trip. Hello, I'm David Miner. This was my first mission trip. I've never done anything like that. If you know me at all, I'm really not that kind of person. And uh, it, it was hard. It's like uh, I, I feel like I'm annoying people if I get in their face and here, here's a track. And so it was very hard. But what, what I want to focus on really is what prepared me for this. Before I joined the choir, uh, Jim Vaughn had asked me to pray before the service for uh, revival. So we would go in the back and we would pray. And uh, we was doing that. Well, then the church started doing invites. And I'm like, well, I can't be praying for revival and not do invites. So I go to invites. And then I would do Tuesday nights. And then, then I felt led to, to witness to a, an old timer that I had worked with many years ago that came to the, the lunch on Wednesdays. And so I did that. I didn't realize how hard of hearing he was, and I didn't realize I was talking that loud, but I guess I made everybody late for lunch, and they could, I had to wait for me, and uh, I wondered if they all heard me, and then I walked by the other side of the room, and Barb goes, do you still have a voice left? And I thought, okay, they all heard me. But we, had to, we, had to, we, we did that, and I did some follow-up with him. But, but I think God was preparing me because I, I, I'm still not that person. I'm still not that comfortable, but I did it because I thought God was having me do it. And so I went. Uh, I thought maybe I wouldn't have to. I thought maybe, oh, well, you got to be qualified, and, and maybe I wouldn't qualify, and I'd just stay here, but, but I made it. So I went. But so when I got to the plane, and, and Bill was telling you a little bit about it, Denise, and we did talk for many hours and went over the salvation plan many times, and there's many things going on in her life that was just, uh, it's amazing how far people drift and how far their relationships drift uh, when they're not with God. But I did pass out hundreds of tracks there. I, I, I did it as faithful I could. I, did, I used Josh's advice and I smiled when I did it because you could save more when you, you get more results when you smile. So I did it. And uh, um, I didn't have the long conversations. I just had a few short ones there. But uh, I, we, I did do that. And I, and I, hope, I hope I'd be an encouragement to someone. I said it's, it's still hard for me, but I will, 
I forgot it was telling me to do it. I just, I did it. So just, uh, and I'm glad I did. I would do that again. So thank you. So uh, most of you know Joe and I, and we've always had a heart and a passion for missions. So as this trip came up, we were like, you know, should we go? Should we go? And we were a bit hesitant because this was not like your typical mission trip. It wasn't a work trip where you get to build things and it wasn't working with the kids like I love to do. And so we're just like, I don't know, you know, God, what do you want us to do? And we just got to that point where we just surrendered to God that decision. I said, if you open the doors and tell us very directly that you want us to go, we'll go. And so we did. It was a little bit out of, you know, even my comfort zone because it was a little bit scary going to Paris during the Olympics, but uh, we felt that's what God wanted us to do. And he showed us that in the end, you know, if, if we're willing and just surrender to him and open up our hearts, he'll lead us in the direction that he wants us to go. And I was reminded of the verse in Lamentations uh, 3, verse 50, where it says, mine eye hath affected my heart. And it's, it's uh, my prayer, and I'm sure all the mission team that went, that what you hear and see tonight will truly affect your hearts as well as you look at the photos and listen to the testimonies and realize the importance of our mission trips, no matter how they might look, and um, they all have the same purpose, and that's leading people to Christ. So I want to talk a little bit about this little tool here, this tract, and I know Bob's going to make sure that each one of you have this, and um, Josh mentioned this big plaza called La Defense, and at the, uh, at the entrance, one of the entrances, there is the metro, and we took the metro and walked everywhere. I mean, we were probably in the best shape of our lives by the time we were done with this trip, so the health benefits are great. I highly recommend it. Um, but the metro... Uh, dumped into this uh, area where there's this escalator that comes up into this plaza. And one day I was positioned at the top of this escalator and people were just pouring in. And I mean, it was just like, bonjour, 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 bonjour. And I, I, was, I was about to break out in song. There goes the baker with this trade like always. And it's like bonjour, bonjour. And these people are just getting to their place and and I was hoping that when they sat down in their seat for the Olympic game that they would open it up or that they would scan the QR code. And I, we, we spent a lot of time with this, these pieces of paper in our hands and uh, just really gained a new appreciation for just the simple gospel tract. And what it can do, it's a great leave behind. We've got uh, an amazing plan of salvation that the inner workings of it are so complex, but the face of it is so simple. You know, trust Jesus Christ to save you. Confess your sins to him. You know, it's so simple. And to, to, to give something like this, there were two other groups that were there that I remember seeing. Uh, one we called, do you, make, you guys remember the blue shirt guys? And did you, did you have the blue shirt guys there when you were there? No? There were uh, blue shirt people, and they were handing out booklets. And uh, I read through the booklet, and it took probably an hour to read through it. Uh, the plan of salvation, you could find it in there, but it was so complex. And it's like, oh, these people, they need to know a clear presentation of the gospel. And then uh, also there was another group that I encountered. Uh, they handed me like a, a white trifold with a lot of print on it. And I read through it, and the summary of it was, God has already saved those that he's going to save. Tough luck if, that's not one of, if, if you're not one of his. <laughs> and, and I read that one night after I got it, and I'm like, i got to find one of these people. And sure enough, I found one. And I'm like, listen, why are you here? If there's no hope, why are you here? They're like, oh, no, we believe that God has saved the people that are going to be saved, but they don't all know it yet. And so we're out here to find it. It's like, it's so confusing. And it just reminds me that we have a simple plan. We have the truth. We have a simple plan of salvation. We have gospel tracts all around our church. We could be giving these things away. And I know a lot of people in our church do. And let me just encourage you. Continue doing that. I mean, we, we passed out, what was the number, 45,000? Close, close to 50,000 gospel tracts, which that's bigger than the city of, of Maslin. And you know, we did that all within just a couple-week period of time. Those tracts went back to different parts of the world. We have no idea the effects that these are going to have, but we just pray that God will, we, we were faithful to do what he's called us to do, and God's going to give the increase. Thank you so much for giving as a church, for supporting this endeavor. 
It was amazing. It was wonderful. Thank you. A few years ago, when John Loss first brought up the idea of doing something during the Olympics in Paris, uh, you know, it was something that we were talking about or he talked about, but at one point we really got serious and uh, uh, John and I started working on it and we realized it was too big for just the two of us, so then we brought on Lewis McClendon, then we brought on um, uh, James Browning uh, out in California. Uh, to do our marketing for us on our website, and then we brought on Brian Berry to handle our social media, and uh, Bree Klink helped with uh, the design of uh, the track. That, tr that track actually took us three months to come up with just that, uh, because we kept making changes and things like that. But one of the things that I, I really wanted to emphasize tonight is none of us are special but yet we all just did what God wanted us to do. And as a result, I don't know if you saw the one slide up there, but over 6.8 million people uh, either went to our website, our social media site, our Facebook, or whatever the case is. That, that's a, and, and listen, you are part of that because you gave and you prayed. And we thank you so much for that. And as Joe said, we have no idea the outreach. I, I really appreciated what David uh, said because there was a lady from North Carolina that came up to us. Uh, one of the slides talked about how over 95 countries, we had one-on-one -on -one conversations, a lot of hundreds of one-on-one -on -one conversations over the length of the uh, uh, um, Olympics, but we had a lady from North Carolina come up to us. She's all decked out in USA stuff, and she started crying. Before we even started talking to her, she came up to us and she just started crying. She says, I'm a Christian, but I don't have the faith to do what you guys are doing. I do not have the, Terry, you were there, weren't you? You don't, you don't have, she didn't have the boldness to do what we were doing. Listen, as David said, it, it takes boldness. Now, I didn't put all the pictures up there. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures. Some of the funniest pictures are of Darlene with the uh, military and the police. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was, we just seriously, thank you. And we have no idea how God's going to work over this. Pastor. Well, when Darlene uh, shared that verse about mine eye, affecteth my heart. I was actually looking up the reference in my Bible. I don't know if you saw me. I picked up my Bible and I said, I, I know the verse. I got to find out where the reference is. But that's what a mission trip will do for you. What you see affects your heart. You've heard that with our young people. You've heard that with those that went to Paris. And uh, when I was sitting back and listening to these reports tonight and all the testimonies, I thought to myself, this has been life changing for them right? It's been life-changing. And you also see the importance of getting the gospel out to the lost. I want to encourage all of you tonight with two thoughts before we leave, okay? Number one, go on a short-term mission trip next year. Pray about it. Every year, we have opportunities for you to go to the mission field. A lot of these individuals took a week of their vacation time and went over there to make an eternal difference in someone's life. Pray about next year taking a short-term mission trip. Secondly, we're living on a mission field right here. Don't forget that people need the Lord right here in our own community. Uh, sometimes we will do overseas what we won't do right here, and that's a shame. Uh, so we want to be evangelistic over there, but we also want to be evangelistic right here in our own community. People need the Lord right here in Canton. You should be receiving that track. We wanted you to have a copy of it. And uh, how many languages, when you go to scan the QR code and you go to the website, how many languages is the gospel in? Well, we have, uh, we have, we have 10 missionaries. Okay. Okay, so 10. But the entire website is uh, uh, translated to every language in the, US, in the world. 
Okay. All right. So you heard that. I mean, this was phenomenal. And, and I'll tell you this. We had the passion, the pastoral vision to make it happen. But people like James Browning, who has the technological skill and knowledge, he made it a reality with the marketing and all. So take one of these home. You can scan the QR code yourself. Go to the site. Check it all out. And uh, so, so very thankful. I'm thankful for our young people. It was sort of, they were stepping out of their comfort zone getting up here tonight and sharing. You guys did a good job. You really did. And uh, we're proud of our young people here at our church. All right, we're letting you out early. And we were worried about all these testimonies and all that we had planned tonight. We were worried, how in the world are we going to get it all done? But we got it done. On Sunday, on Sunday, we are recognizing first responders. And so it's going to be a good day. And I think it's a good and an appropriate thing to recognize the first responders that serve right here in our community. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, that on Sunday. So I encourage you to come back, be a part of a good ABF class at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. We've got 13 of them that you can choose from. Get tied into one. It'll help you to feel like you belong here at our church. And we're looking forward to a good day. Grab some of our gospel tracks and hand them out as well. As you go out to restaurants and you talk to your neighbors, Let's do over here what we've done in Nicaragua and also done over in Paris, all right? Let's stand together and you are dismissed. Thank you so much for being here tonight.